in the previous topic, we have taken a look at how finite state machine can be used for lexical analysis. In this particular topic, the tool that can be used for doing analysis or for doing for checking for syntax is called a pushdown machine. Now let's take a look at what are the components of a pushdown machine. First of all, pushdown machine can have states, and we will have design. Uh, we have one designated as the starting state, and then we can also have input symbols or input alphabets, and we can have stack. So if we want to check for syntax, the method of doing that is by using stack, and stack would have stack symbols. These stack symbols can be operated on. They can either be pushed on top or they can be removed. And the manner that this is done is through LIFO, which is last in first out. And then uh, we can also have state transition function. And this function would tell us what is the new state of the machine based on the current state of the stack. State transition can also include operation such as advancing to next input uh, or retain, meaning we stay at the current input pointer and we do not advance to the next one. Machine can also have stack operation such as push or pop. After all input strings have been read, an exit label such as accept or reject will let us know if the string is part of the language or not. This is an example of a pushdown machine that is able to accept any strings generated by grammar2. Um, so this pushdown machine has two states, state1 and state2. So each, each of these tables would represent stacks. And the column header are the input symbols. So, the available input for grammar 2 is A or B or N marker. Meanwhile, the rows header are the stack symbols. So, these are the rows header. So, the stack symbols are symbols that can be inserted inside our stack. Okay, the end marker, this one over here, this signifies the end of input string. This is like our enter. So, for example, if you are designing a system that can accept input from your user, so you have an instruction such as, please enter your name. So your user would enter in the keyboard their name, for example, my name, F-A-D-Z-L-I-N. And at the end, I would press the enter key. So this enter key signifies end of input string. And then each of this cell can have whether an input pointer. Either we want to advance or we want to retain. And then it can also have a stack operation. Whether we want to push or we want to pop. Next, we can also have next state. We can also instruct whether to read uh, the next state. For example, this one means the next operation, we should refer to state 2. And it can also have an exit symbol, whether to accept or to reject, like this one over here. Okay, now let's, let's demonstrate how we can use a pushdown machine to check whether a particular string is accepted or rejected. So this is the uh, similar, uh, the same pushdown machine as in the previous slide, which is the pushdown machine for grammar 2. And the input string we will check um, is AABB. So this is our initial stack. And we're going to read our input string one by one. And the current 
input string is A. So I will write A here. Okay. To read this, we're going to start with state 1 and we read bottom marker and A. So bottom marker and A says this, push X and advance. So push X means in our stack, we will push X on top of it and advance means we will read the next pointer. So the our current pointer now has changed from the first A to the second A. Okay, next we will read X with A. So X with A is this cell over here and it says push X and advance. So our stack previously has a single X. Now we need to push another X on top of it and we will add advance to the next pointer. So advancing to the next pointer means we are reading B. Okay, moving on, we will read X with B. So X with B is this cell over here. It says pop advance. So how do we execute a pop operation? So a pop operation means the symbol on top of the stack is popped out because remember we are doing a live four operation. So once we pop up this X over here, we are left with a single X on top of the stack and we still need to do an advanced operation which means we are reading the next symbol in the input string and it is the second B. And the cell over here also says S2, which means from this point onwards, we need to refer to state 2. Okay, moving on, we read X with B. X with B is this one. It says pop advance. So we pop the other X from on top of our stack and we advance. We have actually finished reading all of the input strings. So at the end of the input string, if you still remember, it's actually an end marker. So the string here is end marker. So when we read bottom marker and end marker, it says accept. So we write accept over here. And this also means the input string AABB is accepted or is one of the strings that can be generated by grammar 2. This is another example of a pushdown machine. Instead of having two states, this is a pushdown machine with a single state and it can accept any string of well-balanced parentheses. So let's try. Uh, I'm going to um, try with this input which is a well-balanced parenthesis. So in order for us to start with the uh, stack checking, so this is the uh, this is the initial state, uh, the initial stack, and my current input is this. So bottom marker with left parenthesis, it says push X and advance. So I will push a single X and I will add to the next pointer. So this is my next pointer, which is the right parenthesis. Now I read X with right parenthesis and it says pop advance. So how do we execute that? We pop the symbol from on top of our stack and we advance. So once we advance, the next input is actually and marker and then we read bottom marker and end marker it says accept okay what if the input is parenthesis that is not balanced so let's try with an imbalanced parenthesis so what if my input is this so start again the initial stack and the current input is left parenthesis and then i read the first one bottom marker with left parenthesis is push x at funds okay. so i will push x on top of my stack and i will add funds to the next pointer so this is my next pointer 
Okay, X with left parenthesis. It says push X and advance. So I will push another X on top of my stack and I will advance. So Okay, next I will read X with right parenthesis and it says pop at funds. So pop means I will pop this one over here and I will add funds. Advance is end marker. Okay, next I will read X with end marker and it says reject. Because our input has in balance parenthesis, therefore it is rejected. In our syllabus, we will be discussing four different types of pushdown machines. The one that we have discussed just now is the original pushdown machine. And then, we will also discuss something called pushdown translator. This is a pushdown machine that has an output function. Not only it can check whether an input is accepted, it can also produce output. The third pushdown machine that we will discuss throughout our syllabus is called an extended pushdown machine. So an extended pushdown machine has a replace operation. So this one over here, we just do two operations, pop and also push. In an extended pushdown machine, we can have a replace operation. We can replace symbol on top of our stack with another input symbol. And then finally, the fourth type of pushdown machine that we will discuss is called an extended pushdown translator. An extended pushdown translator is a pushdown translator that has a replace function, basically a combination of number 2 and number 3. Previously, we have discussed the concept of ambiguous grammar. So to recap a little bit, ambiguous grammar uh, grammar that can produce two different looking derivation tree from the same input string. So this is grammar 4, the one that has been proven to be ambiguous. So what can we do with ambiguous grammar? So first of all, we can rewrite the grammar where the new grammar must be equivalent with the original grammar. If you still remember the concept of equivalent grammar, uh, two grammars are said to be equivalent if they exclusively produce the same strings. So, this is grammar 4. Uh, sorry, this is grammar 5 uh, that has been rewritten. So, this is grammar 4 that has been rewritten. It is equivalent to grammar 4, but if you check, the same input string that was ambiguous pre previously, var plus var times var, there is only one structure of derivation tree that can be drawn by using grammar 5. So grammar 5 is no longer ambiguous. Throughout topic 4, syntax and semantics analysis, what we are doing is actually we are solving the parsing problem. So what is a parsing problem? In a parsing problem, when we have a grammar and we have strings of input symbols, first, the compiler needs to check whether the string is accepted or rejected by the grammar. If the string is accepted, the compiler needs to determine the structure. So there are two types of structure. First is atoms, second is syntax tree. However, if it is rejected, it needs to provide an error message. Meanwhile, parsing algorithm is the algorithm used by the grammar to solve the parsing problem. So for context-free grammar, there are two types of parsing algorithms. The first one is top-down algorithm and the second one is bottom-up algorithm. So throughout topic 4, we are using top-down algorithm. And once we start to discuss topic 5, we'll take a look at bottom-up algorithm.